Um, but, uh, oh, let me see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are you know, many, many experiences. I, uh, one, of, one of my favorites uh, was when uh, Richard Browntree, and uh, he came onto the show and we worked together for a little bit. We got along, which is great. And I used to uh, play guitar a little bit and sing. And uh, I have what I call the Edward Albert Total Gratification Instant Satisfaction Guitar Band. <laughs> And essentially what it is, is you just tune the guitar into a major chord, so without having to learn any chords, it just strums and it sounds good. <laughs> now, if you take a little bottle and hold it against the fifth fret, and then the seventh fret, you can play any blues, rock and roll, folk, country western song I've ever written. <laughs> True. And my, as a matter of fact, my daughter, about a month and a half ago, she said, oh, show me some guitar. And I showed her, and I had her playing three Bonnie Raitt songs in under five minutes, literally. And she said, Dad, I thought you were bragging. <laughs> and for once, I was able to say I wasn't. <laughs> um, but Richard and I used to hang out together. At one point, he, uh, he asked me if I, could, if I could help him learn a little bit of guitar. And I said, sure. So we were hanging out one night there in, in my spacious Winnipeg. And um, we were working a gospel song because you know, the chord changes are, again, those same three chords and everything. And I'm showing them how to play a bottom neck. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, a dog got me that this skinny little white boy was teaching Richard Roundtree how to sing gospel. <laughs>
takes this 56-hour run, and you literally can't stop where you got it. Um, anyway, you'll have to see the film. Yeah. You'll love it. You'll love it. It's an extraordinary, unless they mess it up. It's going to be <laughs> we, we got extraordinary stuff. I mean, we used uh, all the stuff that was happening in Moscow. I mean, they said that four people were killed, but about 16 people were killed. And, I mean, um, the, the day that the, the tanks came in, this little guy started laughing. We're filming this trade sequence. And we were negotiating with the guys in the Kremlin at the time who were part of the coup. And we were filming, I'm on foot with two uh, Russian built black Volgas chasing me, and one does a skid stop and hits me and I roll over and we're running off. And we're doing this, and all of a sudden this tank comes in. And the assistant directors uh, were in charge of policing the crowds and whatever else is going on. Apparently thought it was a parade. <laughs> because one third assistant, a guy about 18, threw the Megaphone is going, excuse me, excuse me, no, we have to swear until five. <laughs> Which didn't, didn't seem to amuse the hell out of that call. So, I, I, you know, I went to the director and we decided that it possibly was, I, I was, actually, I saw that the tank treads tearing up a couple of stones and I thought that that was a little wrecking by the view of the Russians. And uh, so we decided to make a little bit of a retreat, which indeed we did, to a place called the Cemetery of the Heroes, where Khrushchev is buried. I shot a thing for uh, uh, Entertainment Tonight, standing on Khrushchev's grave, right? <laughs> Reminiscing about him saying, we will bury him. <laughs> Why don't you come up and tell me? Slower? Stop? 